members um, that said, yeah, we, we're looking for a great year and we have a little bit of a hiccup with something beyond all of our control, unfortunately. So I hope everybody is, um, you know, staying as safe and healthy as possible, um, keeping their distance where they can, and, uh, and we'll make it through all this uh, together. That's for sure. Um, so we thought, uh, uh, I love travel. Uh, I'm the owner and president of Tours of Distinction. Um, so that's, you know, where I sort of fit into all this. Um, and uh, travel's my passion, always has been. Um, I'm a, I'm a 41 year old fellow and I've been to almost 80 countries. So I thought with a bit of downtime that we have, um, I'd be right to work with some of our uh, uh, travelers and our, our centers and our groups and maybe just have some, a little bit of we fun, um, uh, provide a little bit of support uh, uh, to the centers as well too. Um, but really um, that's just what it comes down to. Something to do, something to have some fun and travel's always a lot of fun. We always like to think that we know uh, where something is or what it is, and that uh, I always think we can be a lot surprised. So um, what I'd like to do is there's 22 questions, so we'll probably be about half an hour or so. Um, and there's some true and false. There's a pick your answer, you know, multiple choice, A, B, or C. And I believe there's two where you'd write in the answer. Um, so what I like to say is we're on the honor system, and I, I, I trust all of you that will you get a point per question. So if you do have a pen nearby and a piece of paper, that'd be handy to go grab one right now real quick. Um, and what we'll do is whoever just has the most at the end, uh, um, we'll give a dollar uh, a card for a program uh, or a spend of your choice at your local center that's participating in the call right here. Um, so, um, if you do have some questions along the way, um, feel free to let me know, jump on in. Um, uh, I'd like to keep it. There are definitely some easy ones in there, uh, and call, um, some doozies as well. Uh, so don't get mad at me if it's a tricky question, uh, cause there's, there are a couple. So, uh, with that being said, um, let's, let's begin. I think I can share my screen here. And there we go. So can everybody see my screen okay? Does that work? Yeah? Yep. Okay, good. So without further ado, I want to say again, welcome to all of you. Um, I've been having a lot of fun doing this and we've sort of taken a bunch of different things from around the world, whether it's a site, whether it's a, uh, maybe it's a, a population thing. Why can't I move? There we go. Um, or a fact, you never know. Um, so let's begin. So there's so a few things from the States uh, as well included. I don't want to forget us here in America because uh, we have a lot of unique um, stuff uh, as well that happens here. Um, so first question, number one. Which of the following state has the most coastline? This is here in New England. Which state do you think has the most coastline? Massachusetts, Connecticut, Maine, or Rhode Island? Maine. Oh, write down your answer. Don't say them out loud, sorry. My bad, my mistake. <laughs> but I won't comment on that, but I am smiling at your answer. Let me put it that way. All beautiful states here in New England. How's everybody enjoying the heat today? It's quite a scorcher, isn't it? Yeah. The coastline's maybe not looking so bad, is it? Yeah, that's nice. Okay, how's that? Are we ready to move on to number two? All right, sounds like it. Number two, question number two. Why can't I? Sorry, oh, there, I got it. I thought I could use the arrow key to move the slide. I have to use the computer. Um, Question number two, uh, the Galapagos Islands are part of which country? Is it A, India, B, Ecuador, C, South Africa, or D, Australia? And not that it matters to anybody that you haven't met my wife, but my wife is from this country, actually. And the Galapagos Islands, they're a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Gorgeous place. Okay, everybody ready to move on? All right, sounds good. What is the world's 
third most populous country. And remember, as we go through, and you'll see a picture of some things, that picture will always relate to the question, but the picture doesn't necessarily mean it's the answer, okay? Just a little tr trick, a tip. So question number three, what is the world's third most populous country? Is it A, China, B, India, C, the USA, or D, Indonesia? No, I'm not giving too many hints. This is a, one of my favorite countries to travel to. So I kind of gave a hint there. Okay, everybody set? Have your answer down? We'll move on to question number four. True or false? Ushuaia is the southernmost city in the world. And Ushuaia, it's okay to know the country, is a town in Argentina. No. Oh. Argentina. Where a lot of great, if you, if you like steak, a lot of great steak comes from Argentina. They're known for their steak, I should say, their, their, their beef. And when they do a barbecue in Argentina, they cook the whole thing. Uh, not just the best parts of the cow. We're talking the tongue, the brain, the hoofs. <laughs> whole thing goes on a barbecue. It's called an asado. Well, it's called Masado in Chile and Argentina, it kind of depends. But yeah, the big, big, huge barbecue, um, like four times the size of what we'd normally consider a home barbecue, and they just mm. take everything apart and toss it on. Oh, no. Mm, yeah, cow tongue's not necessarily the most enjoyable piece of cuisine. Let me put it that way. Um, all right, moving on to question number five. Which country below is not landlocked. Is it A, Turkey, B, Austria, C, Bolivia, D, Laos? Hmm. And that there is Bolivia, a picture of Bolivia, believe it or not, um, that's called the Altiplano, and that's some of the highest elevations in the world. And yeah, they even have flamingos up there. Can you believe that? A bunch of salt water that exists. Sort of like we have a bit of that in Utah. All right. Uh, moving on to our friends to the north uh, above uh, Canada, which lucky you guys. I'm actually from Canada. I moved here four years ago uh, with my family. Um, Canada has eight provinces. Is that... A for true or B for false? And that's a picture of Western Canada, province of Alberta. All right, question number seven. The Caribbean island, Aruba, is a territory of what country? Is it A, Italy, B, Spain, C, the Netherlands, or D, Colombia? Huh. Aruba is in the Southern Caribbean. Right, actually, right near the coast of South America. It's not far. All right, question number eight. Hanoi is the capital of which country? Is it A, Thailand, B, Vietnam, C, China, or D, Malaysia? Okay. There was a famous sort of, I'll give a little tip here. Um, 
a famous hotel brand. Uh, they used to call a jail in Hanoi, the Hanoi Hilton. If that is a little bit of a tip. All right, moving on to question number nine. Now, this is a right in your answer one, and this is right here in our sort of own backyard. Uh, this fame, you don't have to know the exact, well, I'll get to that in a second. The fame, this famous ski area is located in New England and was the home of the Von Trapp family after they left Europe. You don't need to know the exact ski area if you were to put the state. Yeah. Uh, that is an acceptable answer as well. Okay. But yeah, the Von Trapp family left Austria. I think in the, if I remember correctly, late 30s or early 40s. All right. Question number 10. Where is the castle featured in this picture, which is called Neuschwanstein, uh, located? Is it A, Austria? B, Switzerland, mm -hmm. C, Germany, or D, the Czech Republic. Oh its, nickna it's nickname is the Cinderella Castle, as a little bit of a tip, it's been known as. Though the name itself is Neuschwistein, um, I, something that you always need to double check. But literally is a fairy tale castle. Okay, moving on to question number 11. What country would you be in if you said, G'day, mate? Well, that's my attempt at an accent, so you can't make fun of me. Uh, would it be A, New Zealand, B, Ireland? C, England, or D, Australia? There was a movie in the 80s, I believe it was the 80s, yes, it was the 80s, that made this phrase pretty familiar on this side of the water. All right. Uh, moving on to question 12. The Amazon is the world's longest river. Is it A for true or B for false? The Nile is. Um, well, 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 interesting, but we'll talk about that at the end. All right, what a great picture of, of Amazon. And the world's tallest waterfall. This is question 13, the world's tallest waterfall. Not widest or shortest or most volume, the world's tallest waterfall is in what country? Is it A, Zambia, B, Russia, C, Venezuela, or D, the USA? Yes. Okay. I guess. Okay. That actually is a picture of the world's tallest um, waterfall. Isn't that something, eh? All right. Moving on to question 14. How many are there? There's 22. Oh, okay. Nope. One hear. sort of a... We have one towards the end that's sort of a, a jokey one. You'll see. Now, true or false? This is question 14. You can find tigers in Africa. We have a team member here that um, trivia is not necessarily her thing, but she nailed a few of these questions here today. I, I ran them over with some, I went through some of them today for fun with the, the, our team. And uh, yeah, her answer surprised me here. She's smart. All right, moving on to 15. Qu 
Question number 15, where is the below located in the Middle East? Is it A, Jordan, B, Egypt, C, Lebanon, or D, Iraq? Maybe the animals there give a little bit of a little bit of a hint. I'm guessing. Oh, okay. All right. Question number sixteen. See a couple Canada questions. They were close by. I thought it's always always good to throw in our our, our neighbors to the north. Um, what is the capital of Canada? Is it A. Toronto, B. Montreal, C. Ottawa? D, Winnipeg. I grew up an hour uh, south of the uh, Canadian capital. Not that that helps you here at all. Okay. Uh, I think I think everybody's got a good shot at this one. Oh, yeah. Question number 17. In what city would you find the below? And that is Big Ben. Is it A in London, B in Oxford, C in Manchester, or D in Dublin? Let me say. There's a nice shot of it right on the Thames River there. Looks like it's in November. They've been renovating parts of uh, of it for ever. I kind of just gave away the answer there. I think. All right, moving on to eighteen. Question number eighteen. What, what world capital city is largest in size by population? Is it A. Beijing, B. Tokyo, C. Rome, or D. Delhi or New Delhi in India? I like to scratch. I don't like to scratch. All right, moving on to question number 19. In what city would you be if you visited the Eiffel Tower? This is my favorite city in the world. I've been there, I think, 12 times. I think. Okay, moving on to question number 20. What is the Caribbean's largest island? Is it A, Jamaica, B, Puerto Rico, C, Cuba, or D, La Espanola? And La Espanola is Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Uh, those two countries make up the island of La Espanola. Colorful Cuba. Oh, sorry, only 21 questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so I threw this one in for fun a little bit. Um, being from Canada myself, this is a freebie answer. Everybody can give themselves a point. But do you, so being from New England, uh, see your answers below, but do you add an R to words that don't have one and leave the R out of words that do? A, yes, B, no, or C, sometimes. That's just a little fun one to round things out because we're from New England. I, um, when I moved here, uh, a lot of people say the word idea, uh, which is fine. It's just different. Um, so I, I used to have to ask, what, what word are you referring to? Idea. I said, but it's, it, it, there's no R on idea. Um, but yeah, it's just how it is. A little quirky thing. So everybody gets a point for that. I just thought I'd throw in that for a little bit of fun. Um, so yeah. Okay. Now, if everybody, we'll go through them. We'll go through the answers. Um, and um, what about 22? No, I, I sorry, I thought there was 22. There's 21 questions. Oh. Wow. I thought I had had 22. My apologies. Okay. 
So we'll go back and we'll go through them and, and learn a little bit about each thing as we do. Uh, and then we'll tally them up at the end and, um, you know, win, and, uh, we'll pick the winner. And if there's a tie, again, we'll do a draw. I'll do it right here in my office um, for everybody. Um, so uh, the state that has the most coastline, the answer is C, Maine. Right. That was correct. It's got all those, I know like we could say Connecticut and uh, Rhode Island have a smaller coastline in terms of length anyway. A lot of people think Massachusetts, the Bay State, um, but when it really comes to Maine, it's, Maine's almost the size of New England anyway, but it also has tons of coves and things like that uh, that really wind their way along. Uh, Maine actually has been seeing a boost in tourism in the last uh, year. Uh, one, one of the most popular states that people are looking to travel to. Um, so the Galapagos Islands are put a part of what country? The answer is B, Ecuador. And Ecuador sits right in South America there on the coast. And uh, the Galapagos Islands are about an hour flight um, west into the Pacific Ocean. Um, and what's really spectacular about the Galapagos Islands is if we remember um, our, in school, the Charles Darwin and the theory of evolution and all those things um, that he wrote about, uh, that was based upon a lot of stuff in the Galapagos Islands. So literally, I always say, whenever you see a picture from the Galapagos Islands and the animal, in this case, it's a seal, is right there, that picture was taken right there. You don't, you're not zooming in, you're not, you can get that, you can get yeah, as close to the animals as you're not allowed to touch them, but the animals are allowed to touch you. That's the law of the Galapagos Islands. So if that seal wanted to come over and you didn't move and he put his flipper or whatever on you, went, that's allowed, but you can't touch him. Uh, so the Galapagos Islands is a marine reserve in addition to a massive national park, uh, but uh, uh, the animals don't know any enemies there. That's what makes it truly special. Even birds, you can walk right up to birds. It's incredible. Um, so again, the answer uh, to that is uh, B, Ecuador. Um, uh, what is the world's thir third most populous country? That is Indonesia, over in Asia. Yeah, it, China, then India, then Indonesia. I kind of tricked everybody. The U.S. is fourth. So um, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And that picture is actually from Indonesia. Uh, Indonesia has a lot of the traditional... Well, Indonesia has over 100,000 islands itself, um, which makes it incredible. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a mix of the uh, Hinduism and Muslim uh, in the country. Um, and so you get a lot of uh, juxtaposed, juxt, uh, I'm not saying the word right, a lot of temples and things like that that are juxtaposed upon each other. It's quite, it's really just uh, a, an amazing place. Also home to the Komodo dragon, which is just a big, huge lizard if you've ever seen those, but technically it looks like a dragon. Um, but anyways, the answer to uh, question number three is D, Indonesia. True or false, Ushuaia is the southernmost city in the world. The answer is true. Oh, Ushuaia good. sits on the tip of Argentina, um, and that's where the, I get confused, the Cape of Good Hope is that one. I get confused between it and the South African one. But that's where all the boats leave for Antarctica. So if you wanted to do a cruise from Antarctica or whatnot, that's where you'd, you'd go from. Some go from New Zealand, but those are like 32-day cruises. Uh, you can do a nine-day trip from uh, the tip of Argentina. Um, so it's neat to think that you can be on the end of the world and you're not upside down, you know? Uh, quite incredible. Beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, so question number five. Uh, what country is not landlocked? The country that is not landlocked is A, Turkey. Turkey sits uh, basically on two continents. They like to say it, it's the bridge, uh, specifically Istanbul, the capital. Uh, sorry, it's not the capital, the largest city. Sits in Europe, half the city. And then the other half, they say, sits in Asia. Uh, so the Bosphorus is what runs right down the middle of Istanbul. Um, but technically, it's not a landlocked country where all the others, they're landlocked. Canada has eight provinces. Is that true or false? That is false. Canada has 10 provinces uh, and three territories, one of which was only created about 20 years ago, I think was the newest piece of territory. 
And the last province to join Canada, believe it or not, was Newfoundland, the furthest province to the east. And that was in 1949, if I remember correctly. Um, so a big, 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 big country, but they only have eight provinces. Um, that's because I say there's a whole lot of nothing. Once you get 100 kilometers north of the U.S. border, there's not a lot out there. It's beautiful, but there's not a lot. 80% of the Canadian population lives within 100 kilometers of, uh, of the U.S. border. Uh, the Caribbean island of Aruba is a territory of what country? The answer is C, the Netherlands. Wow. Yeah, and if you still go there today, there's actually quite a few islands still that are um, part of uh, uh, the Netherlands or Holland, uh, uh, as it may be also be known as well, too. Um, and when you're there, there's a bit sort of the, I like to say the Dutch are a bit eclectic. Um, uh, the country's awesome. The people are fantastic. Uh, but they're quirky in their own way. Um, and you can see a lot of that even I find amongst the islands. Uh, Bonaire is another one uh, included as well. A lot of the architecture too that the Dutch have at home has been brought over and uh, was still used even in um, the Caribbean islands but it's super close to South America. I think it's only, I don't know, like a six hour, seven hour boat ride off the coast of Venezuela. Um, question number eight, Hanoi is the capital of which country? That country is B, Vietnam. Um, yeah. And Vietnam, you saw, I mentioned, we all know our history uh, of the war and um, it used to be North Vietnam, South Vietnam. And when they unified, because um, technically, the Vietnamese, if you will say, won the war. Um, it was the capital was established in the north in Hanoi, and it was Saigon as we all knew it in the south, uh, which is still there today. Um, it sort of just became a city. Uh, but it is funny because if you're in Hanoi in the north, that is where a lot of the history is. Um, it's a very old city, a very mint sort of, if you will, for lack of a better expression, government run city. That's where the government sits. Um, but Vietnam being as long and skinny as it is, um, Vietnam, Hanoi's in the north and Saigon's in the south. Um, Saigon's the total opposite. It's still, it's almost funny to this day, that country's still split in two because the north, again, has a lot of government control where the south really is free market capitalism reigns supreme. Uh, day and night between the two, even though it's one country. Uh, so, uh, number nine, uh, this famous ski area located in New England was home to the Von Trapp family when they left Europe. Uh, the famous ski area is Stowe, but it's in the state of Vermont. So, either answer is acceptable um, if you had those. But yeah, when they left Austria, um, of course, it, uh, they ended up in Vermont and just felt that that reminded them the most of where they'd come from. Um, so, they set up camp there. Um, and you can, to this day, the hotel's great. It's got a very... Bavarian theme to it all. Uh, the trap name, that's the trap family lodge in Vermont in the picture. Um, and it has that sort of very still uh, Bavarian uh, uh, theme, as I was mentioning, which is kind of neat right here in America. Um, and that's sort of one thing I always like to say on a side note with America is I, you know, coming from Canada, um, I, we've, I've spent so much time. I used to grow up in Florida basically, you know, for four months out of the year. We'd go down so much uh, and hit the beaches. They call Florida the 11th province, actually. Um, but um, there's so much to see and do in America. It's such an amazing, amazing place like that because you had people from all over the world. You still do. But back then, come from wherever that brought whatever they were interested in or they were doing, and they came over and just set up shop where they liked it. Um, it's an amazing, amazing place. Um, so uh, question number uh, 10. Uh, where is the castle of New Schweinstein? located that is located in germany so the answer is c germany it's very very close to the austrian border probably from the castle you can be over in austria in about five minutes um but again this castle is world renowned for it being the cinderella castle uh, which we tend to think of when we think of cinderella and where would you go if you had to say good day mate and that would be australia answer is d and they literally say mate in England. They'll say mate in um, the word mate, which just means friend, if you're not familiar with it, in New Zealand. Um, but it's actually 
stereotypically true that almost every Australian will say good day, mate, uh, when they see or meet you. Um, it's nice. It's actually just a, you just, you know you're in Australia when at the end of the day. I lived there for a month, um, or a month, sorry, for a year. And they're kind of quirky people because if I was to say it, not even in their accent, just good day, mate, they made fun of me. And they'd be like, ah, look, he's trying to say good day, mate. But, and then if I didn't say it, they'd be like, what, you're not in Australia long enough? You don't know how to say hello? Nah, they were just pulling my chain all the time. It was funny. They're, they got a good sense of humor down there, that's for sure. Um, so 12, uh, the Amazon is the world's longest river. True or false? The answer is A, true. But I've heard somebody say the Nile. Now, the Nile technically could be considered the, um, uh, the world's longest river, but really the Nile's formed by two rivers, the Blue Nile and the White Nile, which both have their origins in a different place. Um, so technically, as it's single river from start to finish, the Amazon is the world's longest river. Okay. And there's still tribes um, in South America. There's still tribes that you can go visit that really, I mean, I'm so sorry, wrong to say, you can't really go visit at all. Um, but there's still tribes that you can go visit and um, that no people, no contact, they've still lived like they have forever. Um, especially in Ecuador, in the Eastern part of the country, you can visit the Yasuni. Uh, and the Yasuni, you just, you know, they don't wear clothes. I mean, they do cover their bits and bobs, but they, that's really it. It's really quite something. It's just. Well, keeping on. Okay. All located in Venezuela. Angel. It's an actual. There. A lot. Of, you can't even see the top of the falls. You just see the clouds halfway up um usually cover it so and the top of angel falls at the top where the falls are coming down um that's just that's not just one piece of rock that goes on for miles upon miles upon miles upon miles that plateau at the top um it's a whole different ecosystem that lives uh, above the uh the floor there if you will um you can find tigers in asia true or false the answer is Africa. B. Uh, sorry, in Africa, the answer is false. Um, you cannot find tigers there. They're in Asia only. Specifically India, more so, but there's a few species of tiger, if you will, that sort of resides in Eastern Malaysia, um, sorry, Northern Malaysia um, and Thailand as well too. But predominantly the tigers found in India becoming an endangered, or it is an endangered species there as well too. And this is a picture of Petra, uh, which is an ancient pilgrimage site in the country of Jordan. So the answer to uh, question number, oh boy, I think I lost my track here. 16 um, is Jordan. Yeah. I was thinking maybe the camels gave it away a little bit because one of the great ways to get there is to ride it. You can take a Jeep right up to it, a car. It's not a problem. Uh, but a lot of people like to take a camel um, uh, up as the way to do it. But if you've ever ridden a camel, after like two minutes, you go, thanks, but no thanks. They're fun for a minute, but then yeah, you're done. A lot, there used to be a lot of companies would do these eight-day camel treks in Northern Africa. and yeah, they don't do them anymore. Because after like a day on the or uh, the camel, people be like, I can't do this for another seven days. It's too much. Because um, it's very uncomfortable. Uh, what is the capital of Canada? The capital of Canada is C, Ottawa. Uh, Ottawa, I grew up an hour south of Ottawa. Uh, it's not, it's a, I always like to say it's a big little city, sort of like what they say about Reno, Nevada, the biggest little city in the world. Um, very government oriented, but a very nice city. Not busy, not bustling. Toronto is the largest city in the country um, uh, and the capital of the province of Ontario. 
And Montreal is the largest French speaking um, city in the country because Canada has the two languages, French and English. Montreal is actually, the, the lar after Paris, Montreal is the largest French speaking city in the world, believe it or not. And then Winnipeg, well, Winnipeg's just cold all the time. <laughs> So in what city would you be uh, if you were to see the below, uh, which is Big Ben in Westminster Abbey? That would be A, London. Good old London, England. Uh, and then what capital, uh, 18 here, I believe, uh, what capital city is the largest in population? The answer to that is B. Tokyo with almost 40 million people. Can you imagine? I lived in Tokyo once for almost six months. I taught English to um, school aged children. Uh, this is 20 years ago now. Um, because in Japan, you have to learn English. The kids have to learn English until they're six years old, and then they don't have to learn any more English. So Japan has a bunch of English teachers that, from England, America, Canada, the English speaking language world that come over, teach English. And yeah, the moment they turn seven, they forget it all because nobody keeps learning English, um, which is fine. You know, their decision I don't, doesn't matter to me. Um, but you, 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 you know, I thought, wow, all these kids learning English. Nobody speaks English in Japan. Nobody. Um, not even hello. Uh, they just don't know it, which is odd considering that you have to learn it but Tokyo is huge and it's an amazing city uh, but it really is uh, a concrete jungle uh, with so many people like Tokyo in another perspective uh, Tokyo's the capital of, or the population of California and then I always say another perspective Canada's the population of California see how funny that is um, so in what city would you be if you visited the Eiffel Tower I think we all I should have got this one. This would be Paris, Paris, France. You didn't have to put France, just as long as you put Paris is just fine. Paris really is truly my favorite city in the world. It's, it's got everything. You could spend a week. Uh, there's few cities that you can go to for a, a week or even for two or three days and spend a lot of time and keep busy the whole time. Paris is definitely one of those places. All right, and then question number 20, what is the largest uh, island in the Caribbean? The answer is C, Cuba. Um, which opened up for a little bit to us uh, for a couple of years and now it seems to have closed back down again to us. Um, uh, but Cuba um, has been growing uh, economically uh, over the last few years too. Um, Tourists from all over the world do go there. I mean, go in the winter, if you go to Cuba, you'll meet half of Canada. Uh, they've flown down for a week and stay at the resorts, then fly home. Um, but Cuba's famous for these old cars. So you'll see a lot of the old cars that you see there, old Chevys or Oldsmobiles or Studebakers or whatever they may be, because before the relationship ended with Cuba and America, those were, those were the cars that they had in the country, and then they couldn't get any more cars from anywhere. Um, so you still see to this day, a lot of these old cars and a lot of them have been fixed up, renovated, uh, like you can even see sort of in the picture way back, there's a blue shiny one. Um, and a lot of tourists will use those to get around. They don't drive, they'll have a local drive. Um, but they'll take them for rides and things like that. It's really, 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 really neat. It's almost like the fifties froze, uh, in Cuba at the time. Um, and then last but not least, uh, do you add an R to your words? Um, everybody got a point. There's no right or wrong answer here. Uh, just a quirky little question about our, our uh, sometimes funny New England accents, I like to say. Not that I have a New England accent. Um, I, have a, I have, still have a Canadian one, I'm told, unfortunately. I'm working on that. But, uh, but yeah, so I hope uh, everybody really enjoyed um, learning a bit, having some fun, uh, seeing some uh, pictures of some great places. Um, so if you could quickly take 30 seconds and add up your score. And what we'll do um, is we'll go, um, uh, basically anybody, I guess the best thing to do is add up your score, uh, we'll give 30 seconds and then we'll, we'll go from there. So write down a big number on your piece of paper of your total when you have it.
and I do need a haircut. I've mentioned before, so apologies for my hair. I people seem to be getting haircuts. Like I, I can't find a place. I I just I can't. So Tyler, people are um, typing in the chat. Someone they're telling their numbers there. That could work. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Wow, she got eighteen. I didn't get that many. <laughs> well, let me see here somewhere. Oh, chat. I think. Okay, I see. Yeah. Okay, eighteen. Good job. Or you can put write it in the chat. That's fine. <laughs> and then what we'll do is the winner as we mentioned will you'll receive a uh, $50 voucher to use towards a program an event or uh, whatever you'd like from uh, at, at your local center uh, yeah when everything starts to rock and roll again can't we not wait hey Can't wait. I'm not a work from home person. We're back in our office now, but that was hard for me because I, 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 I have a difficult time focusing. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm in travel. <laughs> so it looks like 19 from Peter. It looks like 19. Anybody have above 19 that didn't write it in the chat? Trying to look at the videos here. Nope. Not then. It looks like we have uh, Peter and Lynn are, are the winners. Yay! Good job. All right. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll get. Um, I, I mean, Lindsay and I will discuss. Uh, we'll send a voucher out or um, something like that that will um, okay. uh, that you'll receive uh, that will allow you to then redeem at, for whatever you like. Sound Sounds good. good. Awesome. Um, stay safe out there, everyone. Stay healthy. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of us have itchy feet. Um, our brains are itchy just for stimulation. That's for sure. Uh, also stay cool because man, oh man, it warm winter, very cold spring. And now it seems like we're in a desert right now in New England. <laughs> so. Thank you so much. This was so wonderful. Again, he's from Tours of Distinction. Hopefully we'll have some um, trips with them in the near future. So. Thank you so much. Oh, for thanks so much, Lindsay. Thank it was a great activity, and I look forward to hopefully seeing you all again soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. All right. Bye. 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 Lindsay, how do I contact you? Um, if you just tell me your last name. Our last name is Easton, E-A-S-T-O-N. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will get the details, and I'll get it to you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, and I, we, I emailed you just a little while ago to get into the to room from Peter Perfect. Easton, I think. Awesome. So you should, you That's probably it. have that. Well, All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for being here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Have a good one. On you too. Bye. Bye.